Hello, my name is Bjorn Thompson. I'm a senior marketing manager with MeshCloud. Today, I want to show you how you can build a ready to use landing zone with our landing zone construction kit and become the hero your company needs. But before we get into the demo, let me quickly explain to you how landing zones can help your organization get started on their cloud journey and how real heroes make their organization exploit the full potential of the cloud. By enabling the application teams in your company to build a scalable application without compromising security or compliance, we support any greenfield cloud project. But how? By equipping you with the superpowers every hero needs. In order to kick off your cloud journey, our easy to use landing zone construction kit will give you the following superpowers to ensure security and compliance, to prevent misconfiguration of the cloud environments, to tackle cloud native services like a real hero, to save your platform engineering resources, and to rule the huge surface area of cloud services. So, if you're uncertain what a good base security configuration is, or if your application teams are hesitant when it comes to the cloud as they are not familiar with the services, or if you are in lack of resources for the implementation of automation and security assets, then landing zones are what you and your organization need. After speaking about the superpowers our landing zone construction kit holds for you, Mohammed, our site reliability engineer at MeshCloud will show you in a demo how you can create a ready-to-use landing zone in Azure. Let's dive in. Hey everyone. So you heard that MeshCloud offers a lightning fast way to build an out-of-the-box landing zone with a landing zone construction kit. So as Bjorn mentioned, I prepared a short demo that shows you exactly how to do so and get a working landing zone quickly. Now, when you want to start building your first landing zone, you will most likely stumble upon many different ways to do so. We already have a published blog post on comparing those ways in the links below. Have a read and give us your feedback. But with this demo, we're going to use Azure Landing Zones Terraform module. Now, if you haven't seen this diagram before, this is Azure's Enterprise Scale or Azure's land, Azure Landing Zones conceptual architecture. If you're starting your journey with landing zones, this is quite a lot to grasp. That is why we're going for the Azure Landing Zones Terraform module, which is shown in this diagram. So all the grayed out areas are not deployed by the Terraform module. And what we focus uh, in the, on this demo, we focus mainly on the management sub subscription or the management resources overall and the core resources, which are the management groups in the middle, as you can see here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to utilize the Kali command line tool and show you how you can become the new superhero by setting up a new landing zone with only a few quick commands. We're using Kali because it gives you a fully automated deployment process and does not require any more manual steps from your side. Good thing is, you just need Kali installed and some other dependencies like AZCLI, Terraform, and also TerraGrant because Kali is a wrapper around TerraGrant as well. So I'm going to show you how that works, how your landing zone looks like in the end, and how you can play around with it later. So stay tuned and let's start. So first of all, we want to check that Colib works properly <clears throat> because that's what's required. So let's do it with Colib minus P. Now you know the Colib version and uh, uh, that all dependencies are installed. So let's begin our magic now. So at the beginning, you will want to create a new cloud foundation with Kali, which makes it super simple to organize your code and later manage multiple of them. It generates a neat basic structure like this. So let's clear this up first. So we want to create directory, an empty directory. Let's call it Cloud Foundation. Let's navigate into that directory and then do Kali in it. So this will initialize your Kali directory as follows. What we want to focus on at the moment is the foundations directory and the kit directory. So now we have an empty foundations directory and uh, we want to create a new foundation. So let's do a Kali foundation new and then give it a name. Let's call it demo foundation. Let's choose, uh, let's add a cloud platform then choose Azure 
as our platform, give it an ID, and give it a readable name. Now we want to also configure the AAD tenant ID and the default subscription ID. Let's select all management, which is uh, pre-existing. And now it, that's all that it takes to create your new foundation and save and exit. So at the moment, nothing is uh, done. Nothing is deployed in Azure. It's only in your directories. So let's clear this up and check it out. So you have a new foundation at the moment. It's called Demo Foundation with just a, a readme file and the platform that's uh, configured, which is Azure at the moment. So what we have in the Landing Zone Construction Kit is the concept of kits and foundations. So in the kits, usually there are the Terraform uh, resources and scripts that uh, are consumed by, by the foundations. So in the foundations, you define the inputs that you need that actually call the kits, which will be sources for your foundation. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for the foundation. Let's clear this up now and go to the next step. So at the moment, as you've seen, there are no kits. But the following command, we'll call you kit bundle. We'll give it give it a bundle a name, let's call it Azure. We select the foundation that is created right now and the platform, Azure. And there's also a predefined uh, bundled kit that you need to choose. So we go with Azure Enterprise Scale uh, because we want to deploy that uh, implementation option. So let's go for that. And now you have also information on the bundled uh, or, or the bundled kits. So this bund uh, this kit bundle will consist of two kits, the bootstrap and base. And it'll also give you some information on those bootstrap and base and also what to do next. So uh, in the bootstrap, actually you have a storage, uh, storage account that's created for the remote Terraform state. So what it will do first, it will try to bootstrap your uh, your foundation by creating this storage account and store the uh, Terraform state locally. And then afterwards, migrate that state to that storage account or that storage blob. So what you have as well is a service principle that is created with the required permissions to also uh, be used to deploy the other stages, which is the, for example, the base module. So shall we continue? Let's say yes. Now it's downloading the kits from the sources. And now it's asking for some inputs that you need to give to configure these, uh, these kits. So it needs a platform engineer email. There's also a description of what that is. So let's give it the email, which is the user principal name at the moment for in, in the Azure AD. So I'll give it the, I'll give it my user. And also there is a storage account name. So it has to be unique. So let's go with the DF state. Let's say mo zero. And you have to also provide the location of your uh, the resource group that the Terraform state storage will uh, reside in. So let's go for Germany West Central. And now we have to configure the, the base or the enterprise scale uh, kit. So we'll give it first a root ID. Let's call it demo root. And the root name, let's call it demo foundation. And a default location that your resources for the base kit will be deployed. So Kali also provides you uh, the, uh, the the parameters that you just configured for review, and then you can also reiterate if you found any mistake. But let's go for yes. So the uh, input seems right at the moment. Yeah. So let's go. All right, so now it's going to do a uh, Terra Grant apply or also a Terra, Terra form apply, and it will also show the resources that will be created. You can also review them and then just press yes. All right, yeah, now it just created the, uh, the bootstrap resources, and now it wants you 
to migrate that to the new backend. So we'll type yes. All right. So that's it. Uh, so let's check some some of the resources that have been created. This is the subscription that we uh, configured, and let's go inside there. If we go to the resource group, you can already see some the, uh, some buckets or the some storage account that you have the Terraform state in. Yeah, and that's pretty much it for the Bootstrap part. Now we still don't have a uh, a landing zone yet, uh, but I will also show you a little bit of what has been created at the moment. So you have these kits. So you have a base and a bootstrap kit with all the details. So all the Terraform uh, resources you can already see here. And in your foundation, you have the platforms and then you also have the base and bootstrap. And you also have uh, terragrunt.htl, which already contains all the inputs that are required to call the enterprise scale and also the bootstrap, for example, that will also contain the inputs and also uh, some uh, provider uh, configuration. And there's also a general provider configuration that are that is configured in the module.hcl. That is all uh, what is required. And the nice thing is that you have all the structure ready at the moment. You only need to just uh, ad adopt the repository here so you can adopt some, some inputs here if you want to add a, add a kit you can you can include one more kit here and you can also um, customize the kits and the resources as necessary as you uh, as you want basically so yeah let's go back to the terminal so let's continue with deploying the actual uh, landing zone and the uh, deploying the base module so let's go with poly foundation deploy and then you give the foundation name first. and then you also pass in the module that you want to deploy so let's go with base module now you can also review the um, the, the terraform plan and then you choose yes Now it's going to take a while, so it will take around 30 minutes to deploy the enterprise scale module, which is uh, which is normal um, to deploy all the organization hierarchy and also the um, policies that are required in, the, in those uh, management groups, for example. Yeah, that's it. Now, after waiting until Terraform and Azure did their thing, we can now actually start and inspect what we got. So let's go to the Azure portal. One second, not this one. All right. So let's check the management groups. So this is the demo foundation that we got. This is the root ID that we had and the root name. So you can already see that there are no, no more uh, management subscription because it has been moved to the correct uh, management group by the enterprise scale. So it's under management. That's what we uh, configured it to do. So as you can see, we have the whole um, management group or the organizational hierarchy for your landing zone. So you have the landing zones ma management group, the platform management group, and also the connectivity identity and management group, management management groups under the platform. So, and you can see the subscription, which already includes some resources. So as you can see, if you go to the resource groups there, you have the Terraform state that was deployed already from the bootstrap and there are two new uh, resource groups that are deployed by the enterprise scale. So if you go there, you can already see some resources. Um, and yeah, so these are the log analytics uh, resources that are needed for your central uh, logging. 
which is a very important piece in um, having uh, in having uh, uh, central monitor central logging in your uh, cloud foundation so that you have also activity logs and all the required things all the activities that are done uh, within your landing zones are tracked as well so yeah that's neat isn't it so that's pretty much it you have also your landing zones uh, management group so you have corp and online of course you can go in uh, inside these management groups and also check the policies that are uh, deployed there which is uh, the, uh, the core concept of having these uh, landing zones uh, in a compliant and a secure manner. so let's go to policy definitions So you can see all these custom policies and you can also see the policy assignments. So you can already see some of the uh, policies that are applied uh, for the for that uh, management group, the online one. So as you can see, the scope is actually from demo foundation and landing zones uh, management groups, which are inherited policies from the top uh, management groups. So there are actually no added uh, policies with the uh, with the online management group if you go for example to the corp one you can already see some policies there so if you go to policy assignments you can already see some extra uh, policies that are configured for the corp management group so just like this you already have a working landing zone. You've seen how easy it is to set up a working Azure landing zone that follows Azure's best practices. You now have everything at hand to go from zero to hero. So let us know what you think in the comments. If you want to learn more about the superpowers of Mesh Stack, feel free to contact us or better yet, book a demo. See you next time.